kids. Welcome to Hearts Like Kids. Guess what time it is? It's story time. It's Twix time. It's our favorite author, Charlotte time. Welcome, Charlotte. And we are going to learn some more about the adventures of Twigs. Our Absolute. favorite, uh, how would I describe her fairy? Mischievous. That is, <laughs> mischievous fairy. Our favorite mischievous fairy. And a little Let's bit unlucky listen. now as well. Awesome. <laughs> Let's get it go. Let's get started. Absolutely. Well, if you remember from last time, we have left Twigs looking into the eyes of Ooh. she doesn't know what. But That's she knows right. that this probably isn't a very good situation to be in. So no. she's all by herself still. It's the middle of the night. She decided, if you remember, to keep uh, tracking through the night because she had uh, taken so much time to recover from the, the bird attack. And now she is looking into those eyes. So let's see what happens. So we're on trap to 12, in need of a miracle. Blind panic sent Twigs racing away down the path. She had no doubt that this was not a friendly creature. This was something she had to escape, to flee from. Why is everything after me? She cried with despair. As she fled, she kept glancing anxiously all around. And then, sure enough, she saw the vicious and determined looking creature now racing in full view down the trail after her. <gasps> a stoat. No, 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 sobbed Twigs. I need my wings. I need to fly away. I can't run faster than a stoat. But she knew that it was pointless hoping for her wings as she'd lost them, maybe forever, because of her thoughtless behaviour. She had to think outside the obvious, but what? The poor Fay felt desperate and she left the path in hope of losing the persistent predator behind her. So there it is. <gasps> Running behind Twigs. Pelting through the shrubbery, Twigs disturbed another rabbit, a doe this time, and it screamed in alarm as she grabbed its tail when it bolted. The forest floor felt like sandpaper as the fairy was dragged behind the doe. She tried to use the momentum of the rabbit's gait to elevate herself up onto its back, and for a while she was successful until the animal veered off to the right with no warning whilst bucking to rid itself of its unwelcome passenger. Despite clinging on to its downy fur for dear life, Twigs was thrown high into the air and then tumbled into the middle of a deep woodland river. Even though it was June, Twigs shuddered in the icy cold element as she trod water, frantically searching to see if she'd lost the stoat. You've got to be kidding me, she wailed as she spotted the predator pausing at the water's edge. Come on, the bird thought the rabbit looked tastier. Why can't you? <laughs> Just as she was hoping that stoats didn't like swimming, the single-minded pursuer tapped the frigid water with its paw. Then it stepped in, eyeing her with devilish intent. Twigs grabbed at a nearby stick floating on the current and hauled herself up onto it. Using her hands as paddles, she began to propel her vessel towards the other side as quickly as she could. She dared not look behind her as the riverbank got closer. When she was within reach, she threw herself out of the water and ran as fast as her legs could carry her. Splashing from behind indicated that her would-be executioner had also reached the other side. She knew her time was running out because her two legs were no match for its four and she'd, be, and she'd almost exhausted every ounce of her energy and her strength. The pounding fear allowed her one last surge as she jumped to grab a low-hanging branch and dragged herself up to safety. However, to her utter despair, the stoat didn't even hesitate when it reached the base of the tree and it scurried up the bark. Twigs backed along her puny branch, feeling it bow under her weight. The stoat continued towards her, crouching with its tummy touching the wood. Although looking a little less assured now and the fairy realized that the animal knew the branch wouldn't support them both. 
With one last prayer to whomever may have been listening, she dropped from the branch and turned to run away once more, only to come face to face with a pile of boulders blocking her way. She cried out in total fear and near hopelessness. But refusing just to lie down and die for this creature, she scrambled up as best she could, yet she could hear the animal getting closer and closer. Her tired and frantic feet kept slipping on the smooth surface of the stones despite her best efforts. Her historical, hysterical sobs now came unbidden and images of her home flashed before her eyes. The fairy queen, her beloved forest, her treasured wings, all of the fey folk she'd mistreated. And then, just as she'd given up all hope, her prayer was answered when a warm hand reached down from the darkness above and pulled her roughly and unapologetically upwards. Mm. Chapter 13. Friendship can be found in the most unlikely of places. Quick, through here! A boy's voice urged. Without hesitation, Twigs let the hands continue to drag her upwards and onwards towards an old, dark, mottled tree. But stoats can climb! She panicked and tried to pull her hand free, thinking that the boy was leading her to the supposed safety of the treetops. We're not going up, we're going through, the voice insisted, and she knew there was no other option but to follow. As quick as a blink, the boy pushed her through a small, strange, crooked doorway in the tree trunk. And there he is. Oh, there he is. There mm. he is. <laughs> Twigs felt a funny tingling sensation when she passed through a swirling purple mist that cloaked the opening. And the two of them landed in a jumbled, awkward heap on the other side of the magical portal. Realising that she was now lying on a different forest floor, albeit not unlike the one they had just been running through, Twigs tried to process what had just happened. However, the boy urgently untangled himself from her and jumped up to slam the door shut behind them. Twigs watched in disbelief while the door's outline glowed a bright purple for a second as it sealed itself shut and began to fade. The magic was gone. No! She screamed, running towards the trunk where the door had been moments before. My home's through there! What have you done? She grabbed handfuls of her hair as she stared incredulous, incredulously, I can't say it now, incredulously at him. <laughs> then her eyebrows rose when she looked at him properly for the first time in the bright moonlight. <sighs> An elf. That was all she needed, as fairies and elves had been as en enemies for as long as she could remember. You're safe, reassured the elf, whilst also looking bewildered at the disappearance of the door. The creature can't hurt you now, and we elves have to look after each other after all. Ha! I'm not an elf, I'm a fairy, <laughs> retorted Twigs, offended at the presumption that she was one of them. This outburst made the elf tear his eyes away from the tree and he turned to look at her properly for the first time too. But you've not got wings, he said, puzzled. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I lost them. Look, I don't want to talk about it, she snapped, slumping to the ground with her back to the tree trunk. She gazed wearily at her feet. What was she supposed to do now? She was even farther from home than ever and now in the company of... An elf. She couldn't believe the pickle she had got herself into. But still, he had just saved her life, so maybe elves weren't all bad after all, she decided in the morning. Right now, she needed her sleep, so she muttered as much to her new companion and climbed up the very tree she'd just travelled through. She found a spot at the junction of three branches in which to nestle down before exhaustion overcame her. The next morning, the elf found Twig sitting on the ground once more, leaning back against the tree trunk. He watched from a distance as she shook her head over and over again, trying to understand all of what had happened since she'd been forced to leave home. Large tears coursed down her cheeks while she contemplated her narrow escape from being eaten. Twice now. She gazed up when she heard the boy elf approaching and saw he was looking down at her with obvious sympathy. 
She glared at him, taking in his appearance at the same time. Snow white spiky hair, eyes the colour of cornflowers, blue trousers and a red and orange striped top. He smiled whilst blushing as a reaction to being studied and clumsily held out his hand. Let's start again. Hello, my name is Thistle. How do you do? Twigs blinked the remaining tears from her eyes and stared, stony-eyed, back at him and then at his hand, which she refused to take. I'm Twigs and thanks to you, I've no idea how I'll ever find my way home now, she replied sarcastically. Well, what are you doing out here so far from home anyway and wingless? The elf probed, ignoring her jibe. Twigs shrugged. When she realised, however, the elf wasn't accepting that as an answer and as he was continuing to stare at her, her shoulders drooped even further. <sighs> I got myself in a bit of trouble at home and the fairy queen banished me from fairy forest and took my wings. So what? She, st she stated, trying to sound defiant. Thistle looked at Twigs and easily spotted the embarrassment she was trying to conceal. To avoid provoking her further, he laughed cheerily. Well, that makes two of us. The elf council threw me out of Wookiee Woods because I kept playing pranks on the elven folk and I've been wandering the woods for days. The woodland <laughs> we've just left bridges your home and mine. And I was having fun exploring. I'd only just spotted the strange doorway and was about to investigate when I heard your cries. Well, I just had to come and see what was happening and I'm glad I did. Don't worry, I'm sure we'll figure it all out. You think? replied Twigs doubtfully, and she looked back down at her aching feet. And there we have it. Another end to the chapter. Mm. Mm. She makes so, a new friend, maybe. Maybe, if she allows it. If she allows yeah. it, because we know what That's Twigs is right. like. <laughs> if she isn't too proud and isn't Absolutely. too... Mm -hmm. Stubborn. Too twiggish. <laughs> <laughs> too prickly <laughs> too prickly mm -hmm. too prickly that's right <laughs> oh thank you so much and boys and girls we'll see you again in another week for the next two chapters do you <laughs> realize we're almost coming to the end of this book but the good news is there's going to be more books <laughs> i'm so happy because these so are excited. great books <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Charlotte, for joining us. We had a great time listening again to thank this you. wonderful story and what's going to happen next week to our mischievous twigs mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Thistle. Mr. Thistle, who's made his appearance. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. See you next week, boys and girls. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.